We have now arrived at the last lesson of this course, Uncountable Sets. Here is a definition of uncountable set. It is just a set which is not countable. Let us recall that a set is countable if and only if there exists a function f from s to the set of natural numbers such that f is a bijection. So therefore, the negation of this statement is there exists becomes for every so for every function f from the set s to the set of natural numbers f is not a bijection so therefore to show that a set is uncountable we need to show that every function from that set to the set of natural numbers is not a bijection so here is our first theorem. The interval 0, 1 is uncountable. In order to do this, we need to show that there is no bijection from the set of natural numbers to 0, 1. You might be confused how come this is from n to 0, 1. Because this is just saying that if there is a bijection, then 0, 1 and n are countable. Correct? These two can be interchanged. The mathematician Cantor showed that this is true. His trick was to show that every function n from 0 to 1 is not surjective. In order to give a proof of this result, I will give you an illustration so that when you see the formal proof, you will be able to understand it because it is already more concrete for you. Now, before we do that, let us first recall that any real number can be written in a unique decimal form so long as we do not allow the decimal expansion to end in an infinite string of nines. Why is that? Because a decimal number, if it ends in an infinite string of nines, so for example, you have 0 0.9999 and then this one will continue. This is the same as... 1, correct? 1 1.0. If I have, let's say, 0 0.73999, this is the same as 0 0.74. So what we want now is to express every decimal, every real number. Actually, in this case, we only want real numbers from 0 to 1. We will write them in their decimal expansion. But in case it can be written in two ways, we will always use a decimal expansion, which does not end in an infinite string of nines. So, for example, that here is our function f. And let's say that f of 1 is just this random number from 0 to 1. So, I just have random numbers here. Remember that our goal is to show that f is not surjective. That is, we must find some element in 0, 1 that f does not map to. So we want to show that there is an element here, an extra element in 0, 1, such that it has no corresponding pre-image in the set of natural numbers. We want to construct this x. And we will construct this x digit by digit so that it does not match any of the numbers on our list. When I say list, this list here, f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, f of 4, and so on. So first, we want x to be not the same as f of 1. And how do we do that? We make the first digit of x different from the first digit of f of 1. So therefore, we have x is equal to, we don't want it to be the same as f of 1, but the first digit of f of 1 is 2. So I will just make it 4. And then we will fill this details. Okay, next. Of course, we also want x to be different from f of 2. So we want the second digit of f of 2 to be different from x. Now, in this case, the second digit of f of 2 is 4. So therefore, I will just make the second digit of x to be equal to 7. Alright, next. For f of 3, we also do not want x to be equal to f of 3. So as long as we find one digit which is different from f of 3, then automatically it makes x different from that. So in this case, we want x to have a third digit not being the same as the third digit of f of 3. This is 8, so I will just make this 4. 
So in general, we want x to be not equal to f of n where n is a natural number. In order to do that, we make the nth digit of x different from the nth digit of f of n by making the nth digit of x equal to 4 if the nth digit of f of n is not equal to 4 and we make it 7 if the nth digit of f of n is equal to 4. So if you just look at this one so far, right? So here the first digit is 2, so therefore I have 4. This one, the second digit is already 4, so I just made it 7. So if we continue here, f of 3, this is 8, so this is 4. And then for f of 4, the fourth digit is 3, so therefore the fourth digit here is 4. And then we will just continue this process. So therefore from the way that we have constructed our x here, our x here will not be equal to f of k for all natural numbers k. And so the function is not surjective. So this is just an illustration. This is not a formal proof. So we will just generalize what we have done here because take note that I gave explicit values for f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, and f of 4 just for you to be able to imagine it. For our formal proof, we start by letting f to be the function from the set of natural numbers to 0, 1. Again, we want to show that f is not surjective. So we first write f of n using the decimal expansion, which does not end in repeating nines. And I will now write this f of n as 0 point, I will call this d1n, d2n, d3n and so on, I have an n here to indicate that this belongs to the decimal expansion of f of n. So d1n is the first digit of f of n, d2n is the second digit of f of n, and so on. We are now ready to define the number x, which will not be the image of a number in the set of natural numbers. So just like what we did earlier, we now define x to be equal to 0 point x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, and so on, where x sub n is equal to 4 if the nth digit of f of n is not equal to 4, and it is equal to 7 if the nth digit of f of n is equal to 4. And therefore, just like what we did earlier, this x here is not equal to f of k for all natural numbers k. And so, the function f is not surjective. So therefore, we have just shown that any function from n to 0, 1 is not surjective. So therefore, it is not bijective. And so, therefore, 0, 1 is uncountable. Now, here is a result regarding sets containing uncountable sets. Let A and B be sets with A being a subset of B. If A is uncountable, then it is saying that any set containing A will also be uncountable as well. And this is just the direct contrapositive of which statement, let us recall the theorem that we have for countable sets. If A and B are sets with A being a subset of B and if B is countable, then A is countable. This is the statement, every subset of a countable set is countable. So therefore, take note that this is just the contrapositive of this statement. The contrapositive of this implication is that if A is uncountable, then B is uncountable. It is good to always interpret a theorem without mentioning the variables a and b here. So how will we interpret this? The interpretation of this statement is that every subset of a countable set is countable. How will we interpret this result here? This is saying that every set containing an uncountable set is uncountable. 
So for example, the following sets are uncountable. The set of real numbers. Why is that? Because 0, 1 is a subset of the set of real numbers and this one here is uncountable. So therefore, this is also uncountable. Actually, in particular, you can prove that they actually have the same cardinality. 0, 1 is equivalent to the set of real numbers. Can you give me a bijection from 0, 1 to the set of real numbers? Here's a hint. You can actually make a transformation of the tangent function such that its domain is from 0, 1. And then it will look like this. This is the interval 0, 1. Recall that the graph of y equals tangent x. One cycle is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And then you have this one, right? And then this one will continue. So all you have to do is to make certain transformations so that the domain will be 0 to 1. And then of course you need to have restrictions because this graph will repeat. Correct? We just want the function to be from 0, 1. And then the graph will look like this. Exercise. Try to find what this function is. So again, even if 0, 1 is just a subset of R, it turns out that they have the same cardinality because they are equivalent. Here is another uncountable set. The set of irrational numbers is also uncountable. And why is that true? So note that the set of real numbers is the union of the set of rational and irrational numbers, correct? So we will prove this by contradiction. If Q prime is countable, what will happen? This is countable. This is also countable. But what can we say about the union of countable sets? The union of two countable sets is again countable. So this would mean that R would be countable. And that contradicts the result that we have shown in one, that the set of real numbers is uncountable. So we have here, suppose Q prime is countable, then R is also countable since the union of countable sets is countable. And this contradicts our previous result that R is uncountable. So therefore, Q prime must be uncountable. Now take note that we have seen infinite sets, the set of natural numbers and the set of real numbers. They are both infinite sets, but they are of different sizes of infinity. This is countable, but the set of real numbers is uncountable. So this means that there are more real numbers than there are natural numbers. So in a sense, this is saying that R is bigger than N. Also, there are more irrational numbers than rational numbers. So this is saying again that Q prime is bigger than Q. Even if they are not subsets of each other, we can compare them. Why is that? Because Q prime is uncountable whereas Q is countable. So we now define the cardinality of the set of natural numbers. We denote it by Aleph null. This is the symbol for Aleph null. And the cardinality of the set of real numbers is called continuum. And it is denoted by this symbol. So we are now ready to define what we mean by smaller cardinality. So here we are going to discuss infinite sets. Because of course, if we have finite sets, it's easy to compare their cardinalities. We want to compare the cardinalities of infinite sets. So we say that the cardinality of A is less than that of B, denoted by this notation, if there exists an injection, an injection means a function which is injective or one-to-one. 
There is an injection from A to B, but there is no bijection between the sets A and B. This is saying that our function from A to B is injective. So we can, this is one to one, so therefore, it's like this. Take note that the image of A has the same size as A. And why is that? Because F is injective. If it's many to one, it's possible that the image is smaller, correct? However, this is one to one. So if this is A, this is my F of A. So in a sense, that is what is meant by this one. Okay, so that is why B has greater cardinality than A and it has extra elements here because this F here cannot be a bijection. If A and B are finite sets, we already know that if A is a proper subset of B, the cardinality of A would be less than the cardinality of B. But this is not true if A and B are infinite sets. For example, we have n is a subset of z, but the cardinality of n is not less than the cardinality of z, right? They have the same cardinality because the set of integers is also countable. So therefore, it is equivalent also with the set of natural numbers. Another example, the cardinality of the set of natural numbers is less than the cardinality of the set of real numbers. Because we can always get an injection. What is the injection from N to R? We map N to just itself, correct? This is an injection, but definitely not a bijection. And definitely there is no bijection between these two sets because otherwise if there is a bijection between the set of natural numbers and the set of real numbers what would happen r would be countable and that is not true let us look at the sizes of sets and let us compare them so for example set with cardinality zero the only example is the empty set a set with cardinality one let's say the set containing one set with cardinality 2, so let's say A, B, and so on. And cardinality N, an example would be N sub N, correct? This is the set containing the first N natural numbers. All of these sets, which have cardinality 0, 1, 2, up to N, we say that they are finite. And then we have the cardinality aleph null. So what are the sets that have cardinality aleph null? Those are the sets which are equivalent to the set of natural numbers or the countable set. So we have n. We know that q is countable. What else? q plus the set of all positive rational numbers. We also have z. We have 2z. All of them have cardinality aleph null and they are infinite but they are countable. And then we have the cardinality continuum. I actually do not know how to write that. Let's just write it like that. The set of real numbers has cardinality equal to continuum and we have also seen that the interval 0, 1 is equivalent to the set of real numbers. So therefore, it has also cardinality equal to continuum. So the next question to consider is, is there a set which has higher cardinality than the cardinality of the set of real numbers? I arrange these cardinalities in such a way that all the sets appearing below have smaller cardinality than the sets appearing above. So this is the question, is there a set S for which the cardinality of S is greater than the cardinality of the set of real numbers? Now, a candidate for this would be R2. However, it turns out that this set has the same cardinality also as the set of real numbers. And to show this, 
we will use the Schroeder-Bernstein theorem. I will no longer give the proof of Schroeder-Bernstein theorem. I will just give this as a result. And we will just use it to show that R2 has the same cardinality as the set of real numbers. So let A and B be sets. If there exist injective functions from A to B and another injective function from B to A, then definitely there exists a bijective function H from A to B. So in particular, if we already know that there are two injective functions from A to B and B to A, then automatically the two sets A and B have the same cardinality or they are equivalent. Why do we need this Schroeder-Bernstein theorem? Because it's actually difficult to find a bijection from the set of real numbers to the set of R2. So this is the reason why we are going to make use of the Schroeder-Bernstein theorem. If we need to look for a bijection from R to R2, then what kind of proof is this? This is a constructive proof. Because you need to show the existence of this function and you need to construct it. Whereas, this Schroeder-Bernstein theorem will enable us to come up with a non-constructive proof. We do not need to find explicitly what this bijection is. However, we just know that there will really exist such a bijection. So we are now ready to prove that the sets R and R2 have the same cardinality. So the ingredients for our proof, we will make use of this, is the Schroeder-Bernstein theorem. The fact that 0, 1 is equivalent to the set of real numbers. And if A is equivalent to B and C is equivalent to D, then when we form the cross product A cross C, it will be equivalent to B cross D. So these are the main principles that we are going to use in our proof. So here is like the sketch of the proof or like the outline, just so that you know where we are going. We will use the Schroeder-Bernstein theorem to show that the interval 0, 1 has the same cardinality as 0, 1 times... 0, 1. So this is using Schroeder-Bernstein theorem. So that is the first step. So that is, we need to find two injective functions from 0, 1 to 0, 1 times 0, 1. And then another function from 0, 1 times 0, 1 to 0, 1. We want both of these to be injective so that our conclusion is that there exists a function h from 0, 1 to 0, 1 cross 0, 1 such that h is bijective. And so, these two sets will now be equivalent. And then second, we will now make use of the fact that 0, 1 is equivalent to r. So this R is equivalent to 0, 1, but 0, 1 is equivalent to Cartesian product with itself. And then using this, 0, 1 here is equivalent to R, and this is also equivalent to R. And by transitivity, we now have that R is equivalent to R2. So for our formal proof, we want to show two injective functions. How do we define these two functions? So we let f from 0, 1 to 0, 1 times 0, 1 be defined by I get an x here in 0, 1. I want to put it to an ordered pair where that ordered pair belongs to this set. So I will just make it x also because x is in 0, 1 and I will just make this one half. Right? This ordered pair x1 half is an element of 0, 1. So exercise show that f is injective. 
For our function g, we will define it as follows. So for our input, we have an ordered pair in this set. So let's call that x, y. So first, I will write x again as 0 0.x1, x2, x3, and so on, and y is equal to 0 0.y1, y2, y3. So again, these two are the decimal expansion. This is the unique decimal expansion not ending in a series of nines. Okay, we are now ready to define what g of xy is. So we will define this to be equal to 0.x1y1, x2, y2. So basically, I'm just using the first digit of x, then first digit of y, and then second digit of x, second digit of y, and so on. So that is where we are going to map the ordered pair x, y. And again, exercise show that g is injective. And then the rest of the proof can actually be found here in our sketch. So therefore, I will leave it up to you to write it up. So therefore, we were not able to establish a set which has greater cardinality than the set of real numbers because R has the same cardinality as R2. Where will we get this set which has higher cardinality than the set of R? Now, it turns out that for any set, the cardinality of that set is always less than the cardinality of its power set. We already know that this is true for finite sets. Well, it turns out that this is also true for even for infinite sets. So therefore, a consequence of that is that the set R has smaller cardinality than its power set. So this is the set that we are looking for. The power set of the real set of real numbers has greater cardinality than the set R. And if we again use counter Cantor's theorem, this set has smaller cardinality than the power set of the power set of R and so on. Correct? So therefore, this one is saying that there are infinitely many kinds of infinite cardinalities, right? Because we have the set of natural numbers. This is countable. This has smaller cardinality than the set R. But this one has even smaller cardinality than this one and so on. So there are different kinds of infinite sets. And they have different cardinalities.